Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday the 24th. I'm going to be reading from James today. I'm going to be jumping around a little bit. Um, before I get into James, I just want to say James is a half-brother of Jesus. And if you go to John 7, it talks about Jesus' uh, brothers um, challenging him to do miracles. And, um, and it says that they didn't believe in him. So you kind of see it, you almost see it as a, you get the sense that it's more of a mocking thing. And, um, and when, you know, I just was thinking about how, you know, in this world or we have, if people have the brothers or sisters that have become, you know, some status, you know, whether it be a celebrity or something, to the people that grew up with them, they're just still, they're, they're, they're not all that. They're just, they're just their brother or they're just their sister or whatever. But look what happens to James here. James didn't believe in Jesus as Lord until after the resurrection. But he says right in here in, in verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting and i love how james just jumps right in he doesn't waste any time he just jumps right in and says my brethren count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations which means various trials knowing this that the trying of your faith works patience so it produces patience but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire which means complete wanting nothing, lacking nothing, right? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. That's one thing we, we lose sight of sometimes, that when something in the Word is confusing or something we're going through is confusing or why is this happening, we don't ask God to give us godly wisdom. Why is this happening? I know there's something going on here. What is it? But we need to do that that gives all men liberally, God gives to all men liberally, and upbraids, scolds, reproaches, that's what the definition of that is, not. So he doesn't, he won't, he won't get upset with you asking, and it should be given him. But there's a criteria, right, when we ask him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavers is, a like, a, is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Okay, now I'm going to jump to verse 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried... He shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So we are, our temptation comes when we start to yield to the lust of the flesh. Okay, now I'm going to jump to verse 21. It says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. I, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but the definition is uh, uh, excess evil, excess of evil. So, and receive with meekness the engrafted, so implanted word which is able to save your souls. But, but be you doers of the word and not hearers only, receiving your own, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like to a man beholding his natural face in the glass or mirror. So in other words, you don't just hear it and go, yeah, that sounds right, and then not walk it out. We need to walk out our faith, right? And um, I'm going to jump to James 2, 14. 
What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to him, Depart in peace, be you warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, if it has not works, is dead, being alone, but by itself. Ye a man may say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. The, de the devils, or demons, also believe and tremble. So there, there again, belief, simple belief of a knowledge of something, um, it does not save. But will you know, O vain man, vain in this context is foolish man, that faith without works is dead. Okay, now I'm going to get into where I want to get some feedback. I want to get some feedback on, on, on what I was thinking on this last night. And I, so I look forward to your comments. Okay. Was not Abraham our father just justified by works when he offered Isaac? First of all, let me stop there. It says, was not Abraham our father justified by works? And I tend to think of works before last night in reading this that, you know, help an old lady across the street and go help at a soup kitchen on Thanksgiving. And, you know, I think of works like that or maybe, you know, you know, going to church every Sunday and, you know, kind of a... But check this out. In this context, as I read this again, it seems like works in this context could also be... Um, so, uh, the word obedience could be substituted. Okay, let me read it and then kind of get into it a little further. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See you how faith wrought with his works, working with his works. And by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and was imputed to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how by works a man is justified and not by faith only. When he offered Isaac as a sacrifice to God because God told him to, God said, do this, and Abraham was obedient and did it. But my, my, my point is this. Abraham was obedient to what God said. And that was, that was the works, the obedience. And like yesterday when he talked about uh, 2 Timothy was at 2.19 when he said... Um, all that call in the name of Jesus must depart from iniquity. That's God is saying, do this, turn away from iniquity. Um, obedience. Um, so that's, I look forward to your comments on that. Um, now I'm going to go to chapter 4 and then wrap it up with this. Chapter 4, verse 1. From where come wars of fighting among you, fightings among you? Come they not here even of your lusts? That war in your members. You lust and have not. You kill and you desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. So what's the condition of your heart when you're calling out to God in your prayers? You adulteress and adulteresses, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. <laughs> 